Ryan, Hollywood Williams has been one of Alabama's biggest assets as they build this recruiting class for 2025. The former five-star out of Sarah Land chipping in to try to bring in another one of those blue-chip wide receivers, Travis Smith. We're going to talk about that. Jackson Lloyd yesterday made it official, the four-star offensive lineman out of Carmel, California, coming to Alabama. So the pipeline from the Golden State to the Yellowhammer State continues. And congratulations to J.D. Davison, former Alabama guard, wins a title, getting a championship ring with the Boston Celtics. We'll get into that. And today with our friend Big Sexy Elmo right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel, make sure that you guys share with your friends. If they're Alabama fan, fan, fans and uh, I don't get tongue-tied, maybe they'll come over and hang out with us. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Let's get this party started. Always brought to you by our friends at Pearl River Resort over there in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Roll Tide. And a roll tide to everyone. And it is great to see you, Mr. Brett Elmore, at the Brett Elmore Show on the socials. I'm broadcaster Mick. Mick Gillespie, great to have you guys with us today. And uh, right off the bat, I can tell you this, Alabama is building something special. And when you talk about some of the playmakers, the super skill position guys, it seems like Ryan Hollywood Williams, the five-star out of Sarah Land with the great personality, picked Alabama, and he just hasn't quit. And, and you, you hear these guys, they come back from the recruiting trips, and they all say, hey, man, hanging out with Ryan Williams was a big deal, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And that was what Travis Smith said. Yeah, uh, I'm doing fine, Mick. How are you? Uh, <laughs> he's from uh, – Travis Smith's from uh, Westlake out of Atlanta. I always kid you with that, man. I can always nail you with that one. It's always get you. Uh, 6'4", 191 pounds. You know, this guy, um, yeah, he likes to hang out. and and um, But it's one of those border wars, uh, Mick. Uh, we've been going out, and we've been getting folks from all over the country. Uh, we landed a big guy yesterday from California. Um, but this one's in a neighboring state, and it's a battle, and it's going to be a battle probably with Georgia. Uh, who a lot of folks think he's going to go to Georgia and play for the Bulldogs, but uh, who knows? Uh, that's that's why you 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 recruit him and you, you try to wide indict him and then and see what happens. But uh, this is a uh, really good ball player. Uh, plays basketball too, probably equally as good uh, uh, playing hoops uh, uh, as he is on the football field. But um, he's he's your 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 mainstream run run of the mill big time receiver. Yeah. Um, you know, uh he's got that size, like I mentioned, six four, two hundred. Julio um, Jones type guy. Yeah, he's he's just he's just that prototypical guy, you know. And um uh and and this is a guy that they say could could play at the next level uh you know in the NFL on Sunday. So uh a four star, we'll see what happens. Yeah, our buddy Joseph Hastings on the case there, talking about it, uh, basically said that he had a great visit to Alabama and it's going to make it really difficult for him to decide where he's going to go. So last weekend, he was there June 14th to the 16th, uh, had an awesome visit. And Ryan Williams and um, also Caleb Odom were the two guys that that helped you know take him around. They were like his recruiting buddies. And, and this is a guy that, you know, you would love to see in crimson and white. I mean, anybody that's like compared to Julio Jones, you want to bring on campus. Now, I don't know that there's ever going to be another Julio Jones. He's a very special player. But when you start seeing that and hearing that, it, it brings back those memories of what he was able to do, the first true star wide receiver under Coach uh, you know, obviously Nick Saban and then winning a national championship. And I, I love Ryan Hollywood Williams, man. The guy's just, he's got this infectious personality and he's really helping Alabama recruit. Now we talked about this yesterday when it broke, but Jackson Lloyd four-star picks Alabama 
uh, had a great visit to Tuscaloosa, loved the experience at Alabama, uh, great visit, felt very comfortable. You know, that he talked about Coach Cap and, and kind of the brotherhood that he's bonding together with these offensive linemen. And so he joins Michael Carroll, who's another huge interior lineman, um, Mal Waltrip, another guy that's coming to Tuscaloosa to, to block. But these guys are in high school, yet they're already bonding and starting to make these connections so that when they get to Tuscaloosa, they're ready to go. Well, that's what it's all about, Mick. I mean, um, and it, and it's great that it's happening before they even, you know, hit campus. And, you know, you know how it is. It's all about the team chemistry. And they're already developing that, and that's that's really nice to see. Yeah, yeah. Look, man. I mean, it's you know Alabama with what they've done over the years was a factor in this. You know the the fact that they have built this program that gets players to the NFL. You know that obviously is going to make it to where if you could go anywhere in the country, you really look at that. But also Alabama's coaching staff. The fact that Jackson Lloyd was the first guy that they talked to, right? I mean, it gets the job and he's the first offer out there shows you how badly they wanted to have him at their program. So, you know, they were probably trying to do the same thing at Washington. Then he comes to Tuscaloosa. So uh, this is a big get for Alabama. We talked about it and, and it just solidifies that this, staff can recruit and it also builds the lines and that's where you win and lose football games on the line of scrimmage moving forward. So I'd like to see Alabama get some more pass rushers, some more size on the defensive line, but the offensive line right now in good shape and we'll see if they add anyone to that. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit of basketball. JD Davidson, uh, JD Davison, former Alabama guard. I'm going to not take the D out, but it's, Davison, as you guys all know, and I know too, wins a national, uh, wins a, uh, not a national championship, but a NBA title, even bigger than a national championship with the Boston Celtics. He wasn't an, it wasn't an everyday player. He, he spent time in the G league. He played, you know, a couple, I mean, less than 10 games all year, but still part of a championship, get a championship ring. You know, I'm sure you get the championship share of the money. And forever, you're going to be a champion. And you are doing you do it with the Boston Red Sox, one of the most storied programs in the history of the Celtics yeah. basketball. Yeah, the Celtics. And um, Nate Oates was on hand. Yeah, I was watching the game uh, night before last. And, and uh, man, the Celtics, I think they threw that uh, game. What was it? Th game three? Or was it game four? Game four. Uh, yeah. I think they threw that game where they could uh, win it uh, in Boston. I really believe that uh, because they they just absolutely pounded um, Dallas. Yeah, I mean it was just it wasn't even a ball game. But yeah, I look up on TV and look who's there! Boom! No, the guy on the right, the guy on the right. And I'm not talking about the guy in the middle. <laughs> who's that guy? Yeah, a gray and, shirt. Couldn't you wear green, buddy? Couldn't you wear a green, pal? And, hey, coach, could you find a shirt a little smaller? <laughs> Gee whiz. You've been working out? Are you at a basketball game or the gun show? Come on, man. Put those arms up. Yeah, no doubt. Gee whiz. <laughs> That's pretty pretty nice seats, though. And uh, and don't worry about the screaming kid over your right shoulder. He'll be all right. <laughs> and the kid on your left shoulder doesn't even know what universe uh, uh, she's on, uh, got headphones on to, to, to mask the noise. It's okay. Everything will work out just fine. Coach, you stick out like a sore thumb, but, uh, nice to see you there in the first quarter of the ball game. Yeah. Need um, to get green on next time. Yeah. I got to get that green on. I guess he just wanted to go neutral. I got to be neutral now. No, you don't. It's okay. You can pull for the Celtics. Eh, there's nothing wrong with that. Did you watch the game? Who are you pulling for? Mick. 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 Earth to Mick. Who was you pulling for? <laughs> uh, uh, was you pulling for uh, the Celtics? Or were you pulling for Dallas? And did you watch the game? 
Now, I didn't watch any of the games, but I was pulling for the Celtics just because of Davison. Yeah. I, 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 my friends, uh, for some reason, they were pulling really hard for the Celtics. I had one friend uh, who's a big-time Celtics fan, has been for a long time. <clears throat> and then, for some reason, I kept hearing point spread and all this other terminology. Don't know what they were talking about. <laughs> but uh, apparently, they were pulling really hard for the Celtics. Uh, but, yeah, it was great to see Coach Oates. And a congrats to the Celtics. Yeah, no doubt. All right, guys. Hey, this is the part of the show that we always tell you is brought to you by our friends at Pearl River Resort over in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Right now is a great time to check out Pearl River. You got the sports book, which for the last, uh, you know, I don't know how many years. I mean, for, for a long time, you had to go to Vegas to, to go to the sports book. You can do that now at Pearl River Resort uh, as part of the timeout sports lounge and um, basically lay down bets legally. You can play dancing rabbit golf course, which is the Augusta you can play by doing this 50 bucks at the sports book. You can play it for 40 made for a great weekend over there. Big and rich with Gretchen Wilson are going to be there. Boys to men, Brian McKnight. It's going to be a lot of uh, great stars uh, celebrating 30 years at Pearl river and, uh, you know, what's something to check out for all of you guys is the table games and slots. But it's it's a short trip from Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. So check it out for yourself. We appreciate them. When we come back, it will be Brett taking over with today. Uh, roll Tide, everybody. If we come back, it's it's uh, not as much about Alabama. It's about what goes on in the world. You know that you watch this show. You know what we do here. <music> everybody let's take a look at what happened in this day in history uh as far as celebrity birthdays are concerned paul abdul is 62 today mm, yeah uh she got famous as a singer you know mm -hmm. and then she got even more famous on the original american idol you know when they had her and randy jackson and simon yep she was perfect for that show you could not like her they did a great job and they were the most popular show on television for years. Yeah. Uh, Ann Wilson, lead singer of Heart, 74 today. Yeah, we still jam out the Heart. You play it on D JLX. I hear Heart on there sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, Macklemore, the rapper, 41 today. Yeah, people love Macklemore, you know. And, and, and not only does he rap, but he also sometimes jams out and, and plays <laughs> – um, Rock and roll. He's a musician. You know, he looks like a musician. He he he's someone that you'd never. It would never really surprise me what genre of music he popped up in. You know, he he's kind of multi versed in that aspect. But he's a great rapper. He's a versatile. Versatile. He's versatile. Today is Fresh Veggies Day. That's what would be good for lunch, Mick. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Do the fresh. Do you eat a lot of vegetables? Are you a vegetable I'm guy? I, I love vegetables. Any way you can fry them, I'll eat them. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, I, I, uh, I, no, I, love, I, I love vegetables. And let me tell you, growing up, you you had to you had to learn to love vegetables. Yeah, and I food. mean that that was always a mainstay. And man, I I, I love a good um, a vegetable plate with a slice of onion and cornbread. 
That's how they do it, man. That's how they do it. Jasper style. That's how they, have you ever heard that term cornbread fed boys? <laughs> yeah. You know, they, uh, my dad used to say, um, when he was talking about these, um, uh, team, high school teams up in Cortland and, 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 um, Hazelwood and everything. He said, he said, boy, he said, that's a mean country fed, uh, you know, uh, uh, cornbread eating boys. <laughs> and, and, and they would absolutely stomp your ass on a high school football field. <laughs> I mean, Ooh, yeah, right. uh, if, if you got into that country, buddy, and, and, and you, you looked at that bus, you said, man, look at those guys. Yeah. Look at these yeah. dudes. Uh, today is uh, Juneteenth. A lot of folks, uh, a lot of things closed today, federal offices to the state offices stuff. Uh, today's Juneteenth. My one of the guys who is a big mentor in my life was a guy named Clay Matthews. He was the social studies teacher at my high school, and he, he just went out of his way for me. I mean, for years, I still get a Christmas card and a birthday card, and I right. everyone in my family does. And I, I remember asking him. I hadn't heard about Juneteenth. I didn't know if you know what kind of holiday this was, where it came from. And he he was like, man, they've been celebrating Juneteenth in Texas forever. He said this hasn't been a, a federal uh, holiday, so right. You no, know, it's a it's a celebration of uh, emancipation, and and you know, and now it's a national holiday. So we'll all enjoy the day off. And um, <coughs> pretty cool name too, Juneteenth. Like, you know. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, because it, I mean, really diving into the calendar before we get to it, sl slavery was outlawed in the U.S. territories this day, eighteen sixty two. And then in 1865, Emancipation Day. That's what, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's like you said, it's now known as Juneteenth. Um, it was born when the Union General uh, Granger declared that slaves were free in Texas. Yeah. And, and weren't they the ones that they were, they had been free for a long time and didn't even know it? I guess. I. Yeah, I think I, so. Clay told me the story when I was driving one day. And I, and I learned something, you know, they didn't teach us that in school, you know? Right. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they were, they were, they had been free a long time, but they didn't know it. Uh, and apparently, I mean, back in 1865, you probably didn't get the daily newspaper or listen to the radio. No, and, uh, I was you know, listening to Jerry Garcia band and he was doing the song from the band, uh, the night they drove old Dixie down. Right. And I, there's a line in there where he's talking about, uh, you know, here comes Robert E. Lee. And I just picture this like the, the, on, you know, the, the, when someone famous would come through your town on a horse, you know, yeah. like, their stuff behind them. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that would be like word would spread like, Hey, you know, get, look, you're not going to believe this, but there's Robert E. Lee, you know, or there's whoever, you know, back then. And, and I could just picture like how slow news must've traveled, you know, like eh, pretty slow. Yeah, yeah, pretty slow. <laughs> without without any technology, which by the way, you know, less than 200 years later, we've got this. We got yeah, hello. <laughs> we got uh, this. <laughs> so life's changed a lot. All right. Uh today is also a National Eat an Oreo Day. Yeah. I've talked to you about being at a Pell City football game. They fry Oreos there, they're good. Uh, nice. Uh Pell City, yeah. The other ones just fired up. Uh, yeah, Probes. before he was there, it was a while ago, but yeah, yeah. It was so good. I, I, I got like three on a plate, and I was like, man, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> uh, uh, today is also Martini Day, National Martini Day. Yeah, that's not one of my normal go tos. I'm not mean, quiet, but I, I, not, not my thing. I don't think you would look quite right with a martini glass, <laughs> and I don't think I would either. Yeah, but, um, uh, that is today and uh, National Watch Day. I'm a big watch wearer. People, uh, that that's something that's going away. It seems like yeah, because everyone everyone has a clock on their phone, and they have the clock on the radio in their car. And but I have always been a watch man. Right. Uh, I own several different watches, and uh, I, I just I just love them. Yeah. And I haven't worn one in forever. I mean, I, but then if something goes wrong with my phone, you know, um, you, then you're going to call me and you're going to say, what time is it, Brett? And I'm going to say, you know, the time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a National Watch Day. And uh, we dive into this day in history. 1897. It seemed like so long ago. Yet we know this guy. Uh, a guy by the name of Mo Howard is born. One of the three stooges. He died in uh, 1975. Yeah, I mean, it's still funny. Like, once in a uh, while, yeah. you'll stumble upon the three stooges. And it's it, it's great. Now, they tried to do the St three stooge movie. And it that wasn't so good, you know. Yeah, I, I watched it and I wasn't a I wasn't a fan. Now, if it's on TV, like it'll come on TV or it used to, like on Saturday or Sunday mornings, like on AMC or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll watch it. Um, nineteen thirty four, a big win for us in the in the broadcast business. The FCC was established, yeah, to supervise radio, telegraph, and telephone communications. Yeah, yeah, that, but not internet. You know, they really don't. They haven't regulated internet at all, so you don't have the rules that you had with you know the, the other mediums, especially radio. I mean, they radio and TV really were. You know, they, they had so many different rules that you had to do, and they still do. Oh, geez, kind yeah. of, you know that as, as a uh, broadcaster. That's kind of why I like this forum, because you can say what you want to say. And right. You're not as restricted. Right. Uh, 1941, big day for you. Cheerios cereal was introduced. <laughs> you like Cheerios? No. Maybe you honey like Cheerios. Cheerios. And maybe honey nut Cheerios. I've never been. I like flavor. I do, too. Uh, I do too. What's your favorite cereal? Come on, man. If I had to go get a cereal right now, you, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, what's the one with the big hunks of nut in them? Honey bunches of oats. I think so. Yeah. I like that one. Um, you know, when I was a kid, if I could get my hands on cookie crisp or, uh, cheer, yeah. or uh, lucky charms, uh, yeah. lucky charms guy, you know, um, I hate to tell you this, but, uh, I eat those as a grown up. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I already knew that. I knew, I knew that you were a cereal guy. I just I just yeah. see you like dipping your spoon in like the milk. You, yeah. you drink all the milk when it's done. Yep, I'll drink it out. <laughs> I'll drink it out of the bowl. <laughs> uh, also, this day, nineteen fifty-three, Julius and Ethel uh, Rosenberger executed by electric chair. Uh, in New York after being convicted of spying for the Soviet Union. He was 36. She was 37. I bet you they had some really fancy electric chairs back in 1953. Could you imagine sitting in that chair in 1953? I think if they gathered up all the people now that are spying on our country or turning our se the secrets over or you know, just doing anything that was treasonous, you know, there'd be a lot of electrocutions. I'll just tell you that the, right the, now. The lights may go dim for a little <laughs> while. I don't know if they're ever going to get rounded up, but there's <laughs> we'll a lot. Sitting around we'll around say, we'll say, why is the lights going dim? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's <laughs> Wednesday. They're doing their, their, their weekly, their weekly electrocution. Uh, geez. Um, Let's see what else here. Uh, uh, let's see. Anything else happen? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for you. Eight, uh, 1987. Ben and Jerry ice cream and the Grateful Dead's Jerry Garcia announced a new ice cream flavor called Cherry Garcia. Yeah, still around, too. Still yeah, around. Yeah, it is. I went to the Ben and Jerry's ice cream place in downtown Chattanooga a couple years ago. And, and once I got through the line, I finally got some ice cream. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know people on here are like, I hate when you guys talk politics. People hate when Ben and Jerry's get involved in politics, you know, <laughs> like they, 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 they're, they're always kind of at the center of being kicked out of stores and stuff, but the ice cream itself is great. You know, like in the yeah. cherry Garcia, I still get that, like that, kind of that grateful dead vibe when i go in you know when i get that ice cream but that's not something i do a lot but i do like it at least the taste of it's good you love ice cream quit lying to the public <laughs> i do i had one just a minute ago yeah i, I know yeah yeah we, we were set to get the show started and nick says hold on i got a hankering i know 
and, and, and he ran and he ran into his house, <laughs> came back with ice cream, <laughs> ate it, and I'm sitting here like this. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast of champions. Like, oh god. Uh, and finally, 1991, <laughs> Pablo Escobar surrenders to police. What was he famous for? Yeah, he was famous for drugs, and he probably cut yeah. into their drug margin. You know, <laughs> smoke them if you got them. I t- this is a napkin. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, he was like one of the guys. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine if I? Had They're gonna be knocking on your door. Yeah. Me, me, me. Mick, 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 Mick gets scared anytime I, uh, no, it's just a napkin. But could you imagine that? Man, that uh, had a hog leg the size of my arm. Um, <laughs> like a Bob Marley split. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, funny. that's a look at this day in history. Hey, guys, uh, we, we jumped on yesterday when Jackson Lloyd announced he was coming to Alabama. Check out that video. Check out our other videos. We appreciate all you guys for hanging out with us here. On a daily basis, Brett's on, as you can tell, weekday mornings from 6 to 10 a.m. on WJLX 101.5 in Walker County. And you can always listen to it on the WJLX app and other major apps. Roll tight, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us.